A few years ago, I decided that it was time to buy a CNC machine for my shop. But I wrestled with that idea for years because if I did so, would I still be able to call myself a hand builder? So today what I want to do is show you how I use this machine to make the necks on my acoustic guitars. And after we're all done, I want you to decide whether or not I should still call myself a hand builder. Okay, so anybody who's built guitars knows that when you go to make a neck, the first thing you do is you start with just a big chunk of wood. The way that I do my necks is I buy these larger pieces so that I can make two necks out of one chunk and each of those necks is one piece. I don't like to use the scarf joints. Um, so in order to do these, what you would normally do if you didn't have a CNC is to make a template. In this case, I just have this ukulele one, so same idea though. But we would trace this, we would put this on here and we would trace it out and then go over to the bandsaw and then cut it out. Well, what we're gonna do instead of using the bandsaw is we are going to use a digital template in the computer and then we're gonna run it and then get two neck blanks, at least from the side profile, cut out of it with almost no waste and very accurately. So we're gonna put the bit in here, let it run, and then when I'm done with that, we'll have a little bit of a conversation about the pros and cons of doing that. Okay, so it just got done doing its profile cut on this and you can see on here even using a half inch bit how little waste we've gotten you can see we've got one guitar neck and two guitar necks the nice thing is that they're already perfectly thickness to the final dimensions of what i'm going to need to before i start carving them by hand but it didn't quite cut all the way through so i need to run them over to the drum sander i'll do that real fast we'll come back over here and i'll show you what this step has yielded and then we will do the second tool path that we need to run on these things and we will talk about that. Well, what about you? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay, straight off the drum sander, what we have is two perfectly uh, cut neck blanks. And you can see how these were nested inside of there. Let me think, where is it like? Yeah, like this. They were inside of that piece of wood like this and in I don't know 25 minutes we were able to get those cut out of there um, to me this is exactly the same product that we would have yielded had I done this on the bandsaw the only difference being that it would have had a little bit of slop to it and I would have needed to do a bunch of cleanup work on it the old way that I used to do this was exactly that I would cut it on the bandsaw and then I would go over to my um, to my drill press and put one of those uh, Wagner safety planters on here and get this thickness the difference with the CNC is that that part's already done. I not only have my neck blank, but it's already dimensioned to 15 millimeters here, 22 millimeters here. It's got the correct scale length already cut into it. So already in my opinion, we're ahead of the schedule. So the next step that we need to do is to move over and load the next program on here and cut the top profile on this guitar neck. Um, the way that I used to do that was to use the old template here this is the way that I do it. I know a lot of people do it differently, but I would actually cut the taper into the neck using this template that I would just tack on here and um, I would draw it on there and then cut it on the bandsaw once again. And before I would do that, I would use my table saw or my router table and I would cut the truss rod channel into it. But what we're gonna do here is do all that in one foul swoop on the CNC machine.
Okay. So now, we still got a little bit of work I need to do just cutting this off, but I'm going to break this off of here. There we go. <laughs> so what we have now is most of the neck fully cut out. All I got to do is take these lines here and trace them and cut them with a handsaw. So there's that. And then I'm going to take these down and cut that with a handsaw as well. So we'll just break off the rest of this wood. And then we will dive into the philosophy of CNC versus hand. that little kind of quick video gave you a better understanding of how I use my CNC machine to go from a neck blank like this and <laughs> taking me to a point that I am right here. Um, what I'd like to talk about is how does this look any different than it would be if I would have done it all by hand. If I would have cut the profile of the side on my bandsaw and then taken it to my safety planer and thicknessed it here, gone over to the router table and cut my truss rod channel and cut my um, carbon fiber channels, it would look identical to this same exact spot. The only difference is I would have physically pushed it by hand through the machine. It's still a machine that is powered by electricity that gives me a level of precision that I can't do by doing it by like literal by hand with like a chisel. Um, I don't want the conversation that happens in the comment section in this video to be about what the definition of handmade is. We don't need to have a bunch of definitions from the Webster's Dictionary. Um, I think we all know that like truly to its definition that this isn't actually handmade, but that's not really what I'm trying to get at here. What I want to do is can we still use some level of automation, in this case a CNC machine, and still call it handmade? How is using this any different than making a really high precision template and then giving that its repeatability? And what I think allows me to be able to thread that needle between it being handmade and CNC made is that at this point, we still have a lot of wood left on here. And so I'm gonna go from this point I'm going to now glue in my carbon fiber inserts. I will set my truss rod inside here. I'm going to actually hand cut my mortise and tenon on the guitar. I'll glue on my fretboard. And I'm still going to carve all of this completely by hand. The, this whole thing, it starts off as this and turns into this. And it gets to this point completely by hand, which I, allows me the ability to shape it with a sense of tactile um, with my hand and be able to feel, is it getting to the point where I'm happy with it? Is it getting to the point where my clients are gonna be happy with it based off of their playing style? So I'm still achieving that handmade quality. And this example is just what I do on the neck. Um, another example is, um, as you may have seen in the 3000 year old guitar build, how I use my CNC machine to cut the actual shape of my soundboard out. Okay, well I would have used a bandsaw to cut that shape out. I mean, how is that? How does that at all affect the quality of the finished guitar in a bad way? I don't think that it does. And so for me, I think if as a builder, you can find a way to use automation, once again, in this case, CNC, to give you a more repeatable product, to give you a way of wasting less wood, to give you a way of providing a super high quality that only makes the instrument better and doesn't make it worse while still having the ability to hand voice the guitar, to hand shape the neck, to shape the braces by hand, to make all my inlays completely by hand. I spray my lacquer by hand. I buff them out by hand. There's so many steps that are handmade. I simply use my CNC machine to speed up processes that I would just use another power tool for. So I think what I would like is to kind of just foster a conversation amongst not just guitar builders, but guitar buyers and players. What is it about having a handmade guitar and that name attached to it that makes us all feel so romantic and so much better about our purchase? So I think what I'd like to foster in the comment section on this video is a conversation about why is it that we're all drawn to the sense of handmade? I mean, the obvious is, like I've been saying on all my videos, is having a handmade guitar allows me to be able to voice it and make that guitar specifically for a client. But at what point 
Where do you cross that line between it being handmade and CNC made? How do you maintain the integrity of being able to call yourself a hand builder? Like I consider myself, I build handmade guitars. I build handmade acoustics. I don't know that I would call my C my electric guitars handmade because I'm using the CNC machine to build pretty much all of them. In this case, it's a little bit different. But let's all talk about that. What? Give me an example of some builders that you know of that use CNC, but you would still consider handmade. Or are you very adamant? Do you just consider the moment that a CNC machine touches in any way, is it not handmade anymore? But more importantly, would you or would you not agree that CNC is just another tool, just like any other tool? And it, it takes years to learn how to use this tool in the most effective way. Uh, it takes a skilled craftsman to be able to program it. I have taken all my years of woodworking and been able to apply them to programming it to work here. I designed all of these from scratch. This is just different than downloading a file and pushing enter. Um, so yeah, I just want to talk about that. And if you guys could add to it and you feel like um, we can move the ball down the line and not just make it a you're right or you're wrong conversation. I feel like there's a nice sweet spot in the middle. And uh, this is the future of guitar building, whether you like it or not. I will still continue to build all of my acoustic guitars as much as I can by hand. But if I find that there's an opportunity on this machine to make my guitar even better, then I'm going to take that um, for both me and for my clients. So uh, I hope that you got a little something out of this video and fostered you to think about why you feel the way that you feel about guitar construction. Um, we do want to make sure that we thank everybody who has purchased t-shirts. I don't have one of the nice ones. I have my Carhartt on. I know a lot of people have been liking those. But uh, uh, we do have a link once again down below in the store for t-shirts. And uh, we want to thank you for subscribing and liking, hitting the bell. We are just about to cross the 15,000 subscriber mark, and that's super, super cool. And uh, yeah, I think that this is a conversation that probably won't just be one video. We'll, this will continue to come up, and I know it's going to start stir up a storm. Uh, but just remember, folks, stay nice in the comment section. Nobody's wrong. And uh, this is just about a, a community where we can all have a conversation about guitar building. And uh, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks. <laughs> new shop dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way. Oh, by the way, we got a new shop dog. <laughs> this is Charlie. Say hi, Charlie.